Okay, here's the new problem. There, that's better. Okay, our initial discharge is still the same. What's the only difference in this problem versus the one we just did a minute ago? You mean the K is the same too? Yeah. So just the time. It's just the time, right? So E negative K and K was 5 times 10 to the minus third per day. And then just estimate 30 days per month. And I believe that's 8 months. That should be 240 days. All right, should your answer be larger than 500 or smaller? It has to be smaller. Has to be smaller. Should it be larger or smaller than what you had at the end of, or August 1st? Remember in the previous example we did August 1st, it was 90 days, we had a discharge of 318. Much longer, right? It should be smaller than that. And when I did this, I got a around 150 cubic feet per second. Everybody following how to do that? It's pretty simple. Yeah, a lot of people look at these equations with these natural exponents and they kind of freak out. But it's really a simple thing. It's either a decay function, if it's a negative in the exponent, or it's a growth function. Okay. So I guess the big question at this point is, it's pretty easy to see where the initial Q comes from. If you've had hydrology, you can go out and you can measure that a number of ways, okay? You can measure stream flow with stream gauging equipment or weirs or lots of different ways to estimate stream flow. Time is time, it's not hard to figure out time. The weird one is the K, right? It's like, where'd that K come from? Where do you think K comes from? How could, you, how could you use this equation to get K? You can solve for K, but you need the Q's, right? So you would need a Q initial, which isn't hard, and you would need a Q at some time T, right? So you could look at previous year's data. Look at the year before, look at the year before that, look at the year before that. Kind of average them all together and you can calculate a Q. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is, let me sort of set this up. What if you don't know the Q, or the K, excuse me, for a watershed? What you can do is solve for K with previous year's data. In other words, if you know Q Q 
Q naught and T, you can figure out K. So let me give you an example. So Q at the start of a base flow recession we'll keep using our 500 cubic feet per second and let's say this occurs on April 1st of a previous year. Okay, go back and look at some data and you can see it peak around April 1st at 500 cubic feet per second. Then if you look at it, let's say at the end of December that same year, 240 days later. And we find out it's only 30 cubic feet per second. What is K for this watershed? You might not know exactly how to solve. Take it as far as you can. Remember, we're going to start with Q equals Q naught E to the negative KT.
Anybody get an answer? Or did you get hung up? Did you get one, Jeff? No? Nope. Anybody? <laughs> what what are your two different answers? 2.8 times 10 to the negative 5 and then 1 points to the negative 5. All right, let's take a look, okay? So we ultimately want to get to k, right? That's the goal. Well, we can do this. Most of you probably were able to do this. Okay. Which you probably didn't remember from math that I think you all had back in the day is that E and the natural log are inverse. So if you multiply ln times E, you get 1. Okay, so what you can end up doing is multiply both sides by natural log. When you multiply e by that, you're simply left with the exponent negative kt. And then you can rearrange this for k. k then is going to equal negative 1 over t times the natural log of q over q naught. Negative 1 over 240 days, ln q is 30 feet cubed per second. The initial is 500 cubic feet per second. All these units cancel out. Okay, so I'll leave that up there for you. You can take a look, write it down. We'll go through another one or two of these next week, give you some practice with it. I did my log too early. Did you? Did it before? Now, I know this is just looking like math to you guys right now, but this k, this k is actually, a, it's a real thing, okay? It is different for every watershed, okay? Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about, all right? I'm gonna, do you guys have this? Need more time on this? Okay. Let's look at one of these decay functions, okay? Let me just draw a plot here. All right. Let's say this was, what did we use for our start date? I think we used, what, April 1st? Okay, let's just make this April 1st, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is this base flow recession is going to tail off as a curve, right? Now, 
Some watersheds might tail off like, I'm going to use different colors for this. This one might go like this. Okay. Another watershed 10 miles away, you can think of, let's say, Poudre River. Okay. Poudre River watershed. It has a K. It tails off at a certain rate depending on the plant cover and the geology and how big of an area it is and how big the stream is. You might go right next to the Big Thompson watershed and it might have a decay that looks like this. And yet another one might look like like that. So this would be K1, this might be a K2, and red might be K3. Three different watersheds, each tailing off differently. Look at this K3. It drops really fast, right? How would a watershed that has a K that drops really fast, can you think of anything physically different about it than might be different than one that has a decay of, let's say, this K1 where it's far more gradual. See how this K3, it just like drops really fast, doesn't it? What is that telling you about how much groundwater is available to get in the stream? Compared to the other one, right? So look at, let's say, this time right here. Watershed K1 has a lot more water in the stream, doesn't it? From groundwater. Look at K3, there's barely anything in it. How could you explain that physically out in your watershed? Topography. Topography, okay. This might be steep topography where all the water rushes in at one point, right? It could also be, maybe it's a really small alluvial aquifer. It just doesn't hold much water. So the water comes out at one time and then there's just not much left there. And the water table drops super fast. In this case of K1, the water table isn't dropping as fast, is it? It's putting a lot more water into the stream over time. So maybe it's a bigger watershed. Maybe it's not as steep. Maybe the alluvial aquifer is bigger. Maybe the water can move through the aquifer much easier with this K3 where it just rushes into the stream because it's maybe really sandy or something. There's physical differences that end up influencing what your K is. So the K reflects real differences, physical differences out in your watershed. And you might not be able to tell what those differences are just by looking at the curve, but just know that those Ks really mean something. It means that there's something different about how water is moving from the alluvial aquifer into the stream. Okay? So I'm going to leave you guys with that today. And I will give you some example problems again next week. Play around with this a little bit. The math isn't that hard. It's pretty simple. Once you get used to doing natural logs and exponents, it's pretty easy and it's pretty useful. You can do a lot with this. And I'll try to give you some examples next week where we do a lot with it, okay? All right, any questions at this point?